Well, you know, we talk about a lot of the smells that we want to smell, like food, you know, whatever we're cooking up on YouTube or going on a date with someone. I'm going to tell us now about something we definitely wouldn't want to smell, and that's wastewater. So, You're right. I don't want to smell wastewater. Yeah, I don't think I want to smell wastewater either. But this is research coming out of Washington University in St. Louis. Dr. Jason, he and his team, um, basically what they're doing is creating a microbial fuel cell, which okay. is by principle turns wastewater into power. So poop into power. Um, and then they've added a little twist to it too, that can also do filtration on the wastewater as well. So they've basically turned wastewater from this burden, you know, this thing that we have to clean up to be able to recover, you know, recover the water that we want into a resource. So a way to produce power and a way to get clean water. All right, before we get further, um, I know you've done some work with microbial fuel cells back in high school. I think you won a science fair for it. Why don't you give us like a quick rundown so that we're all on the same page about what is a microbial fuel cell? Yeah, man, you just outed me. This is like a, an interesting topic, a passion of mine. I studied for years in high school and also into college and uh, used the topic at one too many science fairs probably. But um, it's something I'm really interested in. Basically, the way that the microbial fuel cell works is it leverages microbial activity. So okay. bacteria, little microbes swimming around, they eat organic content in, in wastewater. So when I say organic organic content, I really just mean like fecal matter, human waste, poop. They eat these organic contents and they break them down. And while they're doing that, there's a redox reaction. One side reduction, one side oxidation. It's pretty complicated, but what we really need to focus on is fuel cells, like hydrogen fuel cells, the way that you produce energy from there is also a redox reaction. So by concentrating microbial activity, these microbes breaking down this organic content, if you can do it near the electrodes in this fuel cell, you can actually produce power from them breaking down organic content. Got it. Okay, cool. Yeah, so that's the microbial fuel cell. It's existed for a while. Um, and so this here with Dr. He's team, they've added a little spin to it where they can also filter out some of that fecal matter from the water, um, aiding in the wastewater treatment process. And how are they doing that? Like, because I'm assuming different uh, fuel cells also had a way of filtering stuff out. So what, what's the secret sauce here, as one might say? Well, thank you for changing it to my language and saying secret sauce. But so a lot of the previous research and even some of the ones that I worked on um, did the microbial fuel cell power production first mm -hmm. because you need the organic content in there. And then all of the wastewater flows out. And then you put it through a filtration medium at the end. So it's actually a two-stage process. But Dr. He's team has consolidated it into one process. So there's two electrodes in the microbial fuel cell, uh, a cathode and an anode. And what the, what the team from Washington University in St. Louis did is they replaced the anode with a carbon cloth. So it's basically a, a membrane that does the okay. filtration as well as the power production. And it does it all in one step. All right. So... The anode, I guess in this case, is completely changed to this carbon cloth. And can you replace the carbon cloth like if it gets too piled up? Yeah, so that, I imagine that's what you can do. You can take out the carbon cloth, recover a lot of these solids, you know, solids meaning this fecal matter that's been broken down, and use that nitrogen and phosphorus, use those as fertilizers in the agricultural realm, and then the rest of the water passes through. And basically what you can think of this carbon cloth is it it's almost like like a coffee filter if you think of it that way okay. like it's it's permeable enough that the water can pass through but the solids cannot and then you can use that to trap those solids and then you know pour them out and take them somewhere else so what you're going to be left with is the byproducts you're going to have water how clean is the water like cl clean enough to drink or so it's it's not clean enough to drink and it's not potable water either so like the the three three to four classifications of waters there's like dirty water which is this wastewater that's coming in that's the mm -hmm. least clean one step up from that is gray water okay which means that it's been clean mostly but it's not completely clean above that's potable water which means it's safe to drink and cook with after it's been boiled and Got then the it. highest is drinking water what they can produce with this system is that gray water tier so it's 80 to 90 percent of those organic solids have been removed it's not clean enough irrigation um and and other aspects of farmlands Gotcha. That, that's awesome. So you're getting power, you're getting water that you can use for irrigation, and then whatever solids are left over, you can use for fertilizer. It's, it's like a win-win-win. Yeah, exactly. All right. So now, now the, uh, the important question here, how much uh, power can you generate from it? 
Well, and that's one thing that's like, everyone should temper their expectations with this. You shouldn't think that like us collecting our poop and you putting in a microbial fuel cell is going to replace solar energy or going to be the silver bullet to replacing fossil fuels. That's not the case. Um, it, you know, the current device that Dr. He's team can do it, it about, it produces about half of a kilowatt hour per cubic meter of wastewater, which isn't great, but what the team says, they believe they can increase the efficiency by almost half. Um, and also at the same time, you've got to zoom out and look about, you know, where power consumption is, you know, at all in the U S and in the world, in the U S at least two to 3% of all the power produced in the U S is used for wastewater treatment. So you can use a device like this to subsidize the power production you know, because it. it's at the source of this wastewater treatment, subsidize that power usage, um, reduce the power consumption from wastewater treatment. And it, you know, basically is us, again, turning wastewater, which we now view as a burden, right? Something that we have to spend money on, spend energy on. We turn it from a burden into a resource. I love that burden to a resource. You're absolutely right. It would have gone to waste anyway. So you might as well make something out of it. Exactly. But, you know, it's interesting that, 